Red Odeo is a battery reseller. They manufacture batteries and chargers, and they sell those to RVers and ham operators and things like that. So they sent me a 100 amp hour battery, a lithium battery, and a charger to go along with it. Red Odeo does not have any input in this video, and my opinions are my own. I don't normally go by the wattage capacity for a battery in that calculation. I just use amp hours because that's what my radios use and that's what's important to me. I put amp hours in with solar panels and I take them out with the radio. The battery weighs 25.35 pounds, which is like 11.7 something kilograms. One of the things I like about this battery is it's got a holding strap, a carry strap, so I can grab this thing and toss it into the vehicle going on some sort of outing. Personally, I like the layout of the terminals being on top. Now you get two sets of these uh, 5 16 screws to go into lugs in case you were to lose them, I guess. But the thing I like the most is these little caps. They give protection caps, black and red, that go on top of these terminals, which are great because when I have this battery in my vehicle, the odds of something landing across here are pretty good. So you should always be safe with batteries. Now to get access to the power for this thing, I just created a little Anderson power pole connector with some uh, 10 gauge wire, put some ring terminals on it, and uh, power pole connectors on the end. Eventually I'll put on a fuse connector right at the battery. It's always best to be fused as close to the battery as you can be. The first thing I noticed about the battery when I got it out of the box is that to me the sides were swollen. So I put a straight edge on and I measured it and sure enough it looked swollen to me. So I contacted them via email and to their credit they're a pretty fast response. Because of the time zone difference it was almost a day later but I kind of expected that. And now the feedback I got about this battery was pretty good and it made a lot of sense to me. And that is that the case around the actual lithium pack is a ways away. In order to keep that pack solid in there, they've got cushions, padding built into the case, which actually pushes out on the sidewalls of the battery case itself. The case right here is pretty thin. Just by tapping on it, you can hear the difference. It sounds really hollow. And that makes a lot of sense for why this cushion is in here to keep the battery pack tight. Now, so compare to a few other cases, like the thick wall of a lead acid battery. Then I tried an empty gas can. That was a little too hollow. And I tried a trash can, and it was also similar, but not quite right. But what sounded exactly like the thickness, if you're wondering how thin the walls are, I found a battery box where you put a normal lead acid battery and you drop them in there and I tapped on the side and that's what this sounds like. So that should give you a really good idea of the thickness of what I think this case is. Now the charger that they provided with this is a 20 amp hour charger. There's no Bluetooth or anything like that. It does have a chart that shows the LEDs. The charge indicators on here are red or green. And the only real time you know there's a problem is if the red light is flashing and that gives you some sort of error. It doesn't say what the error is, but there's an error. And when I've charged this battery a couple times with this charger, it flat out puts 21 amps on. Actually, it starts out at 21 something, and it varies between 21 and 20 amps from the time you plug it in to when it's done. And to the best of my knowledge, there is no absorption, bulk, or trickle charge mode to this charger. It just sends the juice to it, and the BMS handles it until it's full. The output voltage is 14.6 volts, and the battery clips are really just a smaller version of battery jumper cable. Now, since I don't have any fancy gear like the Smoke and Ape does, where I can do a drawdown test and give a capacity test, I'm really going to use a real-world example of how most of you guys might do it, too. You get the radio and you use it. Well, I've got my PowerWorks meter for checking the in and out voltage. And for tracking the battery usage, I use my Kiwati's clamp meter, DC clamp meter, and plugged it onto the battery to actually see and get a verification. But it gave me some consistent readings of how this thing was charging and just charging. Now for the test, I initially gave it a first charge. It took four hours of charging to get the battery topped off because whenever you're shipping a battery, all the manufacturers will say these things are shipped with less than a full charge. The claim is for the battery charger that on a completely dead battery, you're going to get five hours to charge a 100 amp hour battery. That's a 0.2C rating uh, for 20 amps. Now the discharge rate is a 1C rating, which means you can pull up to 100 amps of draw. And since the most I'm going to be pulling is 20 to 30 amps, at least with the ham radio gear, that's plenty fine for me. There are no cold temperature sensors in this particular battery or any heating pad. So you want to be very careful if you're out in the winter charging this battery when it's below freezing. Charging a battery really could damage it. So you want to make sure you have an actual charger that has cold temperature sensing before you give that a whirl or make sure you put this battery inside.
before you charge it. I've charged this battery about three different times. Initially when I got it and after I had been driving on the road and we did some operating using FT8 on my 857, when I returned back from the trip, I charged it again to find out how much power I drained from this thing. So I used two things to track the voltage on the radio while I was using it. I'm operating at 100 watts FT8 driving down the road. I'm using the PowerWorks meter to track the actual voltage and referring to the voltmeter on the 857. When you're transmitting on FT8 at 100 watts, the drawdown is about 11.5, 11.7 volts. And when it stops transmitting, the voltage releases to 13.2 to 13 volts. And that's a big advantage of using a lithium battery because of that recovery rate. And it keeps that voltage up, which is giving you all that power. Using a lead acid battery, you don't get that kind of power because under load, the battery drops its voltage and you're not getting that amount of power to your radio to begin with. Operating FT8 on the road means I've got to use my laptop. And the laptop is not going to last near as long as this 100 amp hour battery. I brought along a little 400 watt inverter to plug in to this battery at the same time. And that thing draws about six amps when it's charging my laptop. So while using the radio, transmitting with the radio at 15 amps and the battery on the laptop charger charging at six amps, the battery still was maintaining the right voltage and I was transmitting at 100 watts. And this was a really good thing. Now for another comparison, when I got back from my road trip, I plugged in my Victron 1217 Bluetooth charger. The reason I like that is it gives me some feedback on my phone and it tracks charging states so you can see what the last charge cycle did, how much power it took. Now the nice thing about an expensive charger like that is you do get different modes or cycles really. Now there are a couple things I don't like about this battery and that is the thin case. And I suppose if you're in a harsh environment where you need more protection, you could wrap some sort of blanket around it or put it in a different battery box. Because it's not like this thing's in a permanent position. This is gonna be portable for operating out wherever you're gonna be setting up your radio. The other thing I don't like is the battery charger itself. While it does charge the battery, it doesn't give you any feedback. So you don't know if it's charging it too rapidly, but it does charge as advertised. So what are a couple things that I like about this battery? Well, I do like the fact that it's really light. I do enjoy the capacity of a 100 amp hour battery compared to a 20 amp hour battery where normally I'll do an activation, a parks on the air activation, and I'm gonna run 50% power or less, depending on what I have going on. But in my example, I ran a tuner, a battery charger for my laptop, and the radio at 100 watts. And the charging process is pretty straightforward. You plug it into a power socket, and start charging the battery and walk away. It is noisy, but it does its job. Do I think this is a good battery for ham radio application? I do. For the price point at $299, I think, at the time of this video, and the battery charger is $100 for a 20 amp charger, it's not a bad deal. This battery is probably a quarter or less the cost of a high-end lithium battery for a bunch of different reasons. There's all kinds of features and reliability that you get with that. I don't know if this battery is any less reliable. For the price point, you just gotta know what you're getting. And if you haven't purchased a lithium battery before, but you've been thinking about it, $299 or so does seem like an awful lot of money. But once you do some research, you'll find that's not really out of the ballpark, especially for a 100 amp hour battery. So do I think this would be a good setup for you if you've never done portable operating and you're looking at getting a different battery like that? Absolutely. I think it's a great starting point and probably one of many batteries that you'll get over your ham operating experience. But 100 amp hour battery definitely is gonna last you and maybe some other gear that you need to power. If you're interested in more videos on portable setup and antenna setup, check out one of these videos right here. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to get more videos like this. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Hello, Red Audio.